Greetings from Brother Stephen. I'm discipling witness of Jesus Christ to all the inhabitants of the earth. I present to you as a witness this gospel of the kingdom. This lesson titled The Sheep and the Goats. We will be going over Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 through 46. Before we get into the main subsection of scriptures in this lesson, I want to go back over Luke chapter 10. Verses 25 to 37, which is the parable of the Good Samaritan. So you can really understand the parable of the sheep and the goats. So starting this lesson off in Luke chapter 10, verses 25 to 37, the parable of the Good Samaritan. Verse 25. And behold, a certain lawyer. Now we talked about in um, the greatest commandment. That these lawyers are heraldines. It says, stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Now, when you go back to the study, rich young ruler, when we cover Matthew chapter 19, verses 16 to 23, we answered this particular question over and over again in that study. What must people do to inherit eternal life? And this question um, throughout the New Testament is answered the same each time. But we're going to answer that question again in this lesson. We get to verse 26. And he said unto him, what is written in the law? Now again, this is a lawyer, which means he's well educated in the Old Testament like the Apostle Paul. He says, what read you? And he answering said, you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your strength, and with all of your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. Now, we go over this particular commandment in a study titled, the greatest commandment when we go over Matthew chapter 22, verses 34 to 40. This word neighbor that appears in the New Testament comes from the Greek word plesion. And plesion, when you translate it to English, just means near you. So it's saying, love those near you within the same vicinity as you, within the same community as you, as yourself. And basically what I just have here to confirm that is the origin of the word neighbor. And as you can see, um, neighbor actually derives from that old English word um, near. Verse 28. And he said unto him, you have answered right. This do, and ye shall live. And when he said live, he said you shall inherit eternal life. But the lawyer, willing to justify himself, when they say justify himself, in other words, he was loving people, probably near to him as friends and family. And not all those in the same community as him. So he said unto Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Who is near to me? Who is near? Verse 30, and Jesus answering said, a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. Now Jericho is like the ghetto place where a lot of poor and um, minority people will be living at. And fell among thieves, which stripped him of his clothes and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance, there came down a certain priest. Now these priests, he's referring to the Pharisees and the Sadducees, which the scriptures call hypocrites. That way, and when he saw him, 
He passed by on the other side. In other words, they ignored him. Now you go to Deuteronomy chapter 15. This subsection of scriptures from verses 7 through 10 is known as the generosity in lending and giving. And we go over this in detail with many other verses in the study titled, A New Commandment Come Out of the Darkness. And it reads, If there be among you a poor man of one of your brethren within any of your gates, that means in your community, this is what this is the legal definition of neighbor or near you in your land, your neighbor that lives next door to you or live in the same community as you, on the same block as you, around the corner from you. It says, which Jehovah Elohim give you, you shall not harden your heart, nor shed thine hand from your poor brother. He shall not pass by on the other side. But ye shall open your hands wide unto him, and shall surely lend him sufficient for his need, which he want. Beware that there be not a thought in your wicked heart, saying, the seventh year, the year of release, is at hand. In other words, do not make any evil excuse not to give to those who are poor in your community, those who are in need. It says, in thine eye be evil against your poor brother, and you give him nothing. And he cry unto Jehovah against you, and it be sin unto you. You shall surely give him, and thine heart shall not be grieved when you give unto him. So again, that's a great definition, legal definition of the Greek word plesion, um, which translates to near or neighbor. Verse 32 says, and likewise a Levite. So he's still talking about, the Levites is referring to the Levitical priesthood. So here he's still talking about the scribes and the Pharisees, hypocrites. It says, when he was at that place. So in other words, the priest passed by on the other side, the Levitical priesthood, and he saw the wounded man at that place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side also. But a certain Samaritan, now, the key here in this parable about the Samaritan is the Levitical priesthoods have the law. They knew Deuteronomy 15, verses 7 through 10. The lawyer knew Deuteronomy 15, verses 7 through 10. Samaritans did not have the law. They did not have the Old Testament. They did not know about Deuteronomy 15, verses 7 through 10. Um, and then who are the Samaritans? If you go back to 2 Kings chapter 17, verses 24 to 25, um, this subsection of scripture is known as Israel cities resettled by foreigners. And it says, and the kings of Assyria brought men from Babylon and from Kutath and from um, Ava and from Hamath and from Sapharzam and placed them in the cities of Samaria instead of the children of Israel. And they possessed Samaria and dwelt in the cities thereof. And so it was at the beginning of their dwelling there that they fear not Jehovah. So again, that's just a scripture to let you know who the Samaritans are. They were people from all over uh, what we know as today, the uh, Fertile Crescent or Middle East. Um, and they were not Israelites. 
And it says, the Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. He is referring to the man that was wounded and robbed. And when he saw him, he had compassion on him. And he went to him and bound him up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own animal, and brought him to an shelter, and took care of him. And on the next day, when he departed, he took out money, and gave them to the host, and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever ye spend more, when I come again, I will repay you. Verse 36 says, Which now of these three think you was neighbor? So in other words, she said was near. Who opened his hand wide unto him and surely lended him sufficient as he needed unto him that fell among the thieves. And the lawyer said, he that showed mercy on him. Um, you go to Matt, back to Matthew chapter 5, verses 7. It says, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. So again, we go over this particular uh, parable. Um, again, in the study titled, Blessed are the Merciful, when we cover Matthew chapter 5, verse 7. It says, Then said Jesus unto him, Go and do likewise. In other words, if you go and do the same thing as the good Samaritan did, ye shall live, ye shall have eternal life. And then he answered the question also, Who is near to me? So now we get to Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 through 46, the parable of the sheep and the goats. Verse 31 says, When the Son of Man shall come in the glory, shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. Let's go back to Matthew chapter 29. Um, Matthew chapter 24. Verses 26 to 31, that subsection of scripture um, known as the return of the Son of Man. It says, immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with the sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. And again, we go over this scripture in detail in the lesson titled Return of Jesus Christ. When you go to 1 Thessalonians, chapter 4, verses 13 through 18, the subsection of scripture is also known as the return of the Lord. It says, but I would not have you be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them which also sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say, unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remaining until the coming of our Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remaining shall be caught up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so Shall we ever be with the Lord? So again, just a quick review. We're going over Matthew chapter 25, verses 31, when it says, When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all his only angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. So we're going over a few scriptures, so you know what's taking place 
when Christ is returning. And when he and when he is returning, one of the one of the things the scriptures let you know take place is the resurrection is going to occur at his coming. <clears throat> so when you get to Revelation chapter 20, verses 1 through 6. Um, this subsection of scripture is known as Satan bound um, for a thousand years. I want to read verse 5 and 6. It says, but the rest of the dead, those that was not Christ elect, not his sheep, not his people, did not obey him. The rest of the dead, the wicked, lived not again until the thousand years were finished. So we have two resurrections. We have the resurrection at Christ's coming. Then we have a resurrection a thousand years later. It says this is the first resurrection when Christ is returning. It says blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection when Christ returns. On such the second death, which is all, which is the second resurrection after the thousand years, have no power. When you go to Revelations 21 and 8, it says, But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire. And brimstone, which is the second death. And we go over this topic also in the study titled The Unforgiving Brother when we covered Matthew chapter 18, verses 21 through 35. It says, But they, those that are raised in that first resurrection, shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. So back at Matthew chapter 25, the parable of the sheep and the goats, verse 32 says, and before him shall be gathered all nations. So this is about both the resurrections, the resurrection of the just and the resurrection of the unjust. And he shall separate them one from another. He separate them. Um, by the first and the second resurrection. And it says, as a sheep, as a shepherd, divide his sheep from his goats. Now, what does the parable mean when it's referring to bad people as goats? You have to go back to John chapter 10, verses 1 through 21. The subsection of scripture known as the Jesus the Good Shepherd. Verse 1 says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that enter not by the door into the sheepfold, in other words, into the plains, into the fields, into the pasture, but climb up some other way. The same is a thief and a robber, in other words, a goat, because it climbed up some other way. Hypocrites. But he that enter in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. And again, we we'll go over this subsection of scripture in detail in the study titled Watch and Pray when we cover Matthew chapter 24, verses 42 through 51. Revelation 3 and 20 says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice, I will open the door. And I will come in to him, and he will sup with, and I will sup with him, and he with me. So again, when you read about this door, this door lets you know in scripture that it's kind of referring to some sort of a portal that is in our brains, and that when we open that portal, that Christ is on the other side, eternal life is on the other side. So, one side of the door represents Christ. The other side of the door represents the individual. 
So this door is talking about Christ and the individual. But Christ saying, if you open that door that's in your brain, I'm right on the other side of that door knocking. Verse 3 says, to him, talking about Jesus, the doorkeeper, open. And who's the doorkeeper? You. You're the one on the other side of that door. It says, and the sheep hear his voice, and he call his own sheep by name, and lead them out. When, this, when we talked about this, when it's talking about lead them out, it is talking about lead them out of the house, lead them out of the earth, lead them out of great tribulation. This is the first resurrection. So the sheep refer to those who are raised in the first resurrection, and the goats refer to those who climbed up some other way who are going to be raised after the thousand years are up. Verse 33 says, <clears throat> And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, like when Jesus ascended into the heavens and sat on the right hand of God. But the goats, the thieves, and the robbers, those that climbed up some other way on the left. Then shall the king say unto them, talking to the sheep on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you, prepared for you from the foundations of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was hungry, and you took me in. Naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came unto me. In other words, you did not pass by on the other side when you saw me in need. But you opened your hands wide unto me. Now there's another thing I want to point out that I didn't particularly put in this lesson, but it's standing out as I read through it. When it talks about the kingdom was prepared for you from the foundations of the world. We talked about this in other studies also. How the scriptures let you know that God promised us eternal life before the world ever began. And he created the earth knowing that he was going to give it to Abraham and his seed before he ever created the world. The earth was created for the sheep, for the elect, for Abraham's seed. Verse 37 says, Then shall the righteous answer, Jesus the king, saying, Lord, when saw we you, and hungry, and feed, fed you, or thirsty, and gave you drink? When saw we you a stranger, and took you in, or naked, and clothed you? Or when saw we you sick, or in prison? And came unto you. And the king shall answer and say unto them. Verily I say unto you. As much as ye have done it. Unto one of the least of these. My brethren. When ye. In other words. When you was a good Samaritan. And loved your neighbor. As yourself. He have done it unto me also. So those that love their neighbors like they love themselves, like the good Samaritan, Christ said, when you have done it, that you also do it unto him. When you go back to Matthew chapter 10, verses 40 through 42, it's known, this subsection of scripture is known as the reward of service. And we go over this in the study titled Nourishing God's Messengers. When we cover Matthew chapter 10 verses 40 to 42. Verse 40 says, He that receive you, someone that is sent by Christ, receive me. And he that receive me, will receive him that sent me, which is God the Father. He that receive a prophet in the name of a prophet, shall receive a prophet reward. 
and he that receive a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. And again, we go over this in explaining each of these verses in detail in the study titled Nourishing God's Messengers. Verse 42 says, And whosoever shall give you to drink unto one of these little ones. These little ones are referring to the children of God. Grown men that has repented and became like little children. We go over that in detail in the study titled Becoming Little Children when we cover Matthew chapter 19 verses 13 through 15. Whosoever shall give to drink a newborn babe in Christ a cup of water only in the name of a disciple. Verily I say unto you, he shall in no wise lose his reward. Loving your neighbor as yourself. Doing unto others as you would have them do unto you is fulfilling the law. When you go to Matthew chapter 7, verses 12, it says, Therefore all things whatsoever you would that men should do to you, do you even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. When you go to Matthew chapter 22, verses 34 through 40, and again we go over this in the study titled The Greatest Commandment, it says this is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like unto it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. You shall love those near you, in your community with you, next door to you, within range of you, in your city and in your gates, as yourself. If you see them in need, ye shall open your hands wide unto your poor neighbor and give him some Sufficient as he wants, and ye shall not be grieved. For this, Jehovah your Lord shall bless your hands, for you lend it unto him. Verse 40 says, On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. And we describe this in the study titled The Greatest Commandment as a ladder in a deep hole. This ladder represents the law and the prophets. And it basically, the law and the prophets is spiritually designed for us to climb out of darkness, climb out of sin, climb out of the ditch, climb out of Gehenna. And as we climb it out, each step is designed to teach us how to love God with all of our heart and love our neighbor as ourselves. Once we learn that and on our solid ground, we are above the law, no longer under the law, because the law is just designed to teach us, not to oppress us. Go to Galatians chapter 5, verses 16 through 25, the subsection of scriptures known living by the Spirit. Verse 18 says, But if ye be led by the Spirit of God, full of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost is in you, teaching you, you are not under the law. Romans chapter 13, verses 8 through 10, the subsection of scriptures known as love fulfills the law. It says, Owe no man anything but to love one another. For he that love another hath fulfilled the law. Once you love people as you love yourself and do unto others as you will have others do unto you, that is the fulfillment of the law. Because the law is designed to teach you how to love one another, not to oppress you. Not to keep you under the law. For this, you shall not commit adultery. You shall not kill. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying. Namely, 
you show love your neighbor as yourself. Love those that are near you. Love those that are in your community. Love those that are in your neighborhood. Love those that is in thy gates. As you would love yourself. Verse 10 says, Love work no ill. It does no wrong to his neighbor. Therefore, love is fulfilling the law. Back to the parable, verse 41. It says, Then shall he say unto them on his left hand, that climbed up some of the way, depart from me, you cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devils and his angels. This takes us back to Luke chapter 12, verses 35 to 48, the subsection of scriptures known as be ready for service. We cover this subsection of scripture in detail in the study titled the days of Noah, when we cover Matthew chapter 24, verses 36 to 41. It says, but and if that servant say in his heart, my Lord delay his coming and shall begin to beat the man servants and the, ma and the maids. And we're talking about the poor, those that are in need. And to eat and drink and be drunken. They begin to become unaware. They're not focused, not watching for the signs. The Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looked not for him and at an hour when he is not aware and will cut him in sunder. That means divide him in truth, destroy him, kill him and will appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. And again, we go over what all these things mean in detail in the study titled The Days of Noah. Verse 42 say, for I was hungry. And you gave me no food. I was thirsty. And you gave me no drink. I was a stranger. And you took me not in. Naked. And you clothed me not. And in prison. And you visited me not. Then shall they say. Also. Answering him. Lord. When saw we you. Hungry. Or thirsty. Or stranger. Or naked. Or sick. Or in prison. And did not help you. Then shall he answer them saying. Verily I say unto you. Inasmuch. As you did it. Not. To one of the least of these. To my the people. In the kingdom of heaven. Of all nations. All kindreds. All tongues. That repented. And gave their lives to Christ. When you pass. By. One of these on the other side. And then open your hands wide. Unto the poor. And the needy. When you was not a good Samaritan. And loved not. Those near to you. You did not do it unto me. And these shall go away. Into everlasting punishment. The lake of fire, which burns with fire and brimstone, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth, but the righteous into life eternal. When you go to Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 through 23, this is the parable of the tree and its fruits. Verse 21 says, Not everyone that say unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that do the will, that's the work of my Father, which is in heaven, till I return. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? And in your name cast out devils, and in your name done many wonderful works. And then I will profess unto him, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. In other words, those are people 
who thought they were saved but have not risen from under the law. They never learned how to love God with all of their heart and love their neighbor as their selves. This is the main work of God. We go over this in detail in the study titled Recognizing Hypocrites when we cover Matthew chapter 23 verses 1 through 4. I also have a study called A Tree and Its Fruits when we cover Matthew chapter 7 verses 21 through 23. Basically, what I have here is kind of this image blown up so you can read it. It is the certificate of hypocrisy. It says, this reward certifies that the following named persons, and this, is, this certificate applies to all it describes, is a hypocrite of the first order for saying one thing and doing just the opposite. Those who say they love God and are born again, but they do not keep the law. They do not love their neighbors as they sell. They always make some type of excuse not to give to the poor. Evil and wicked servant. Thou shalt not make any excuses, but thou shalt open thy hands wide. And lend unto your poor brethren as he needed. And this concludes this gospel.